he was a lieutenant in the war, and a lot of the lieutenants prior to him, they didn't last very long in the service. I mean, these guys were going over there, and they'd last a few months, and they'd be injured or killed, and um, he didn't last very long either over there. Um, and he, it was really cold, he said, when he was there in the winter, and he said they used to uh, take their socks, <clears throat> and they'd put them inside uh, against their skin. They'd have two pairs of socks, and they'd put their socks inside their, against their chest, to warm them up, and then they would wear do that for all day, and then at night they'd take their socks off and then switch them. And he said, you know, just freezing all the time. Um, so he was a lieutenant there, and th they were in a big push into the into this city, and they had the tanks were um, coming up on this on this um, like wooded area, and there was uh, fields on the sides, so there was two tanks, and they were behind all around the tank and then they started taking fire from the enemy and and the guys in the tank one one big bomb landed behind them and one big bomb landed in front of the tank but it didn't hit the tank but the guys in the tank thought well if one was behind and one was in front we're going to be next so they all jumped out of the tank and ran in the woods and so my dad was really he says he was really pissed off that these guys that you know they had guns on the tanks that they could still shoot too but they weren't so then they had to run into the woods also um, but there was another tank that was coming up so then that tank he had that tank uh, come up and then the guys all went out behind that tank and then they went into the city and then took over the city and captured um, eight to ten prisoners and um, and that was in the Battle of the Bulge and that was um, you know, that was a big part of what happened in the war is those guys in that Battle of the Bulge. That was one of the big parts of World War II. So then it wasn't long after that that he was he was standing in like a courtyard and, and with talking to some other officers, and he was just standing there, and a shell just came and, and took off his, his uh, injured his leg and uh, three of his fingers. And he didn't even kind of know what happened. He just felt down, and, and his set said his leg was warm and bloody. And then, uh, then they put a tourniquet on him, and uh, and the, the medics took him away. And and then he went from different hospitals to hospitals while they were trying to decide if they were going to save his leg. They they said they said they wait five to twelve days before they amputate. Um, your leg because they don't want somebody to make a rash decision when maybe they should save it. Um, so they, so he talked about how it looked like a, a, a piece of steak that was flapped open is how he described it. And they did close it up and they did do some traction and some things, but after a little bit it, it was so painful and they said they couldn't save it and then they did amputate it. And they amputated... Um, like one and a half of his fingers and then the tip of another finger because um, his hand was like down by the side of his leg when the shell came and hit him. And um, so he said the only thing when it, with his fingers, like a lot of patients, they'll get like a prosthesis on their finger or something like that. Uh, my dad never really cared because he was a mechanic and always wanted to do things and they're just usually in the way. So he said the only thing that I that the problem with like, my fingers being gone is that the chains would fall through my finger where my finger wasn't. <laughs> he says that was the only problem I ever had with my hands. So he had this little change purse, those little plastic things that you squeeze that he'd put his change in because the the money would fall through his fingers. 